United considering Edson Alvarez to come in through and obviously replace Casemiro and be the CDM for the club of Manchester United. Welcome to Rokani Media, sorry United Matters channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash like button, comment and share. If you're only watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily we are going to be talking about kobe mainu coming in through to obviously put in a very huge shift as he sends his gratitude to the man that brought him to the club of Manchester United, known as Eric Ten Hag. And obviously, Bruno Fernandes is also going to be here into the mix. Now, we thank God for the gift of life. The Muslim is Barakla Fikum, and may the living to God bless you abundantly. Rokhan David is my name. And don't forget to obviously subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, um, let's obviously start it off with the story of um fabrizio romano man united are considering west ham midfielder edson alvarez internally he said this while on youtube yesterday night he also added and said edson alvarez has been discussed internally at man united and is, appreci and is appreciated by eric ten Hag, although it would be a difficult deal to do as west ham consider him a key player man united are seriously considering signing a new midfielder this summer in case Casimiro leaves. And I think this is a story that I really went ahead obviously welcome in high esteem. Do you know why? Manchester United has always gone ahead to look in for a young midfielder, right? And in so doing, they are looking in for a guy called Edison Alvarez. One, <coughs> he is a Premier League proven player, 26 years of age, you know, and he has gone ahead obviously coming through and really perform at a very high level as Edson Alvarez. And I really love what went ahead obviously do the previous season. He was one of the best CDMs in the Premier League. And he has gone ahead, he played 31 games for West Ham. He scored one goal and one assist. What made him really um what made him really do that? It's because he was really available. In the UEFA Europa League, seven games right efl cup three games he averaged 41 games a season with two goals and two assists for a player like him he's really doing great the only worry is that he got 11 yellow cards you understand in the premier league and four yellow cards into the uefa europa league then he went ahead to obviously gate in what we call one yellow card in the efl cup so he he got 16 yellow cards and he never got a red card but we all know that in the premier league the moment you obviously go ahead to obviously get in what we call five yellow cards in the first i think um i think it is is it 11 games you really sit down for one game if i told you get um 10 yellow cards i think in 17 or 20 games you obviously find yourself really sitting down for one or two games in the due course of the season but i think that can be rectified and you can as well refer it to what we call you can as well refer it to what we call him playing at West Ham where he was playing and the manager who was really pragmatic and the manager was like late obviously chase for that ball and after chasing it will obviously do what we call the hitting a team on the break. That's what the team that he was playing for was doing and that is the team of West Ham. But at Manchester United, I think he'll have much more control of the ball and I think he'll minimize on the yellow cards that he really gets. But it comes with pressure, him coming to Man United, because you have to ask yourself, if West Ham are not willing to sell, what can make them sell? Obviously, what will make West Ham sell is going to be money, right? It's going to be money and nothing else. So if West Ham is to sell, they have to come out here and obviously do the needful and see to it that they get in what we call a lot of money from the club of Manchester United. Signed from Ajax for 35 million pounds, meaning that they'll either want uh, 50 million pounds, 55 or 60. But there is one thing that people have not going to hit obviously understand that Man United has players that West Ham are really hugely interested in. For example, Scott McTominay is one of those that West Ham really wants. And West Ham is willing to pay all cough 40 million pounds north. You understand? There is also Harry Maguire. They want him. You understand? And uh, Linderoff is available. You can talk about um, who else? 
United is willing to obviously dispose of. I think those are the players that West Ham can look at and say, all right, those players are really readily available and in the new course of them being readily available, we can obviously try to do some butter and really convince them because they don't want to sell Edison Alvarez, but Man United is Man United. I tell you, if United sit around themselves and they really believe that Edson Alvarez is the player that they want, they'll come in and attack and really get this deal done and dusted. I believe Edson Alvarez is a player that is good and he's destined to play for big clubs. Remember, even Chelsea was in for him in the January transfer window of 2023. But guess what happened? Ajax went ahead to block the move. The player went ahead to resist it, but he was later sold to Western, meaning that huge clubs are looking at him, even Juventus, I even saw Barcelona and very many other clubs, you know, and he has ever gone ahead to obviously work with Eric Ten Hag. <clears throat> Ten Hag knows him very well, and I think he is a perfect fit into that midfield of Man United. That is it. But for Edson Alvarez, I love every bit about him because he really gives us lots of vibes when it comes to really getting united to where it is he can get that ball from the back press resist hand pass it through the midfield get it from lisandro martinez or andrion hana and really pass it through the midfield when you look at his recovery runs you know his sliding tackles interceptions are really great and he's really a player that has some huge experience he played in the champions league he has gone ahead to play into the uefa europa league and you know where they were knocked out from they were knocked out in the semi-finals and you know which team really knocked them out it was Bayern Leverkusen and they tried to fight by the way when they were in Leverkusen they really fight they really fought a lot because they went ahead they went ahead to really uh draw 2-2 two -two. yet at home they lost by two goals to nil so it showed you that a lot was really happening into that midfield of West Ham and he was not really partnering with quality midfielders because Ward Prowse, Shushek, I think are far much different midfielders from Kobe Menu and Bruno Fernandes because you all admit that when he comes in through, he's gonna be playing alongside Kobe Menu. But the list of midfielders is really endless, but you look at how much they're really gonna cost. We all know that Yao Neves is for 100 million euros. That is like 85 million pounds. Um, you go to you go to uh, Yosu Fofana, 20 million pounds. Bruno Gimares, 100 million pounds. Onana, 50 million pounds. And United will look so much onto that list and obviously coming through and really attack the deal of this guy, Edson Alvarez. And I love the player. And um, he can come in and integrate well into that midfield. I believe it will be a very good signing that if you get him in at the club of Manchester United, He's 26 and you can give him a six-year contract you get and that means he can be at Manchester United for the next four seasons as we see to it that we groom other cdms coming in through from the academy of man united koila and um uh, there is koila and the other guy called um what is his name and uh danny go are really coming in through from the academy and Next season, they, he might be the next big thing to obviously feature into the games for the club of Manchester United. So for me, I'm just getting excited about this transfer window. We are mingling to players and I know activity is really going to be really happening in the nick of time. So for me, Edson Alvarez, I love him at the club of Manchester United. He's known an injury prone player and he's always available to do the job and you will need him. But I think we don't need him alone, but we also need Amrabat to be in to compete with him and people are asking where is Manchester United going to get the money I tell you Casemiro is most likely to obviously leave and go to Saudi Arabia even Fabrizio Romano went ahead to hint on it when he was on playback yesterday and I hinted about uh, Casemiro and his urge to obviously go to the side of Saudi Arabia that is Casemiro for you so we wait and see how that pans out but Edson Alvarez is being considered by Manchester United to obviously come in through and get into that CDM role. Remember, he worked with Eric Ten Hag at Ajax and Man United at a point X pointed at him, but it looks like that deal went ahead not to really come to pass.
So that is it from Edison Alvarez. And let's talk about um let's talk about Bruno Fernandes' situation at the club of Manchester United. We've been told by the Manchester United evening news that Manchester United anticipate Bruno Fernandes' agent, Miguel Pino, could approach them about a new deal later this year if Fernandes is not sold. Obviously, Bruno Fernandes is demanding for more money because he's the captain of this club and he's one of the most consistent players at Manchester United ever since he signed. No player is going to hit to be consistent like him. He is going to hit obviously produce a double, a double figure of goals and a double figure of assists every season he came in through. And with that effort, why should players like Marcus Rashford get a contract of close to £340,000 a week, yet they are not consistent? You get? He gives you one sparkling season and you really get him that contract. And Bruno is like, I'm not going to entertain that. I really want huge money because you've going to hate obviously pay it to players who are not consistent and aren't ready to obviously give us a very huge goal into, into the mix. So, this is really one of the most adhering uh, situations that the board has to obviously adhere to and obviously respond to. And I think if the side of Ineos is really wise and you want to keep Bruno Fernandes, you shouldn't wait for the agent to obviously come in through and table his requests. It's better for this board to obviously come in through and really tell everyone that please, the situation is like this. Manchester United is willing to offer Bruno contract to offer Bruno, Bruno Fernandez a contract of three hundred thousand pounds a week and such and such bonuses. Because when Ineos came in here, they changed everything of offering new contracts. They'll offer a player huge amounts of money when he's worth it and is going to have to prove to be really working at it. So we wait and see how Bruno Fernandez and Man United and Ineos really go upon that. But I believe he deserves the money because. The money is there and he is one of the most consistent players. He never gets injured, he never misses a game, he runs and obviously steps on every blade of the grass where United is playing at. He's the captain and he is one of those players that I believe if we get in Edson Alvarez and you add him in that midfield alongside Bruno Fernandes and Kobe Menu, we'll be having one of the most mobile midfields in the world. and. Casemiro can be sold and money can be coming if money comes in through like um, like 70 million pounds from Saudi Arabia why not get 60 and really get in Edison Alvarez at the club of Manchester United and the balance you get in Amrabat and you'll always count it a day so that's why we believe that if we sell Casemiro we can get in Edison Alvarez and Amrabat at once to come in through and do the job at the club of Manchester United so let's go to Kobe Mainu he has gone ahead to acknowledge Eric Ten Hag. He said, happy to be building with him. Got two trophies. Hopefully there is more to come. Peace of mind to know that, to know what manager we have when we return. I'm so grateful for him. He put so much trust in me to play in the team. I can't thank him enough. So, Kobe Menu is really very hailant of the manager, Eric Ten Hag currently managing Manchester United and the situation that was at the club of Manchester United that point always raised uncertainties for his future at Old Trafford was really calmed down when an announcement was made that Man United is going to stay with Eric Ten Hag and Eric Ten Hag also said they disturbed his holiday but for Kobe Menu, obviously. He has to really send the graduate to, the gratitude to any to nobody else apart from Eric Ten Hag because he's the man that has gone ahead obviously coming through and really put in a very huge interest for this guy called Kobe Mainu. And today we to see whether he comes in through to play and start for England. But he came in through and played 18 minutes when England was playing against the side of Serbia. So guys, thank you very much for watching through. Rock and David is my name. I call upon for your reactions into Man United considering signing Edison Alvarez internally. What do you make about it? Do you think he's a perfect replacement for Casemiro? Or we should go for Ederson, all Hiao Neves, all for Fana, all Bruno Gimares, all or Nana of Everton. And what do you make about uh, Kobe Mainu hailing Eric Ten Hag 
And lastly, what are your thoughts about the big, big story of Bruno Fernandes, United anticipative of his agent to come in through and really put in a shift. Rock and David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later as first video of the day and more is yet to come. Bye-bye. I'm out.